I have a problem. Uh, as an art teacher, um, the word, the problem I have is the word creative. I hear it all the time. People call me creative all the time. David, you're so creative. Um, and when I ask students, when students think about being creative, um, this is my problem. This is what I get. Um, kids compare creative with the word um, weird. Okay. So I have this little graph on how I think about it and my problem with it. Um, so there's this, this circle right here. If you, if you know anything about Venn diagrams, this circle represents creativity. So all the creative things happen inside the circle. I think that there are some things that are creative are also weird. Okay. So if I were to go into the, so everything in this circle, I think are weird things. There, there are some things in this world that are weird that aren't creative. Um, there are a lot of creative things that are weird. Um, or, or weird that is creative. But I think up here is a lot more creative things. You're going to hear me use the word unexpected. Um, unexpected uh, is often creative. And what's more important to me is this idea that interesting ideas happen more up here and less down here. So there's my problem. I feel that weird is easy. Weird is the quickest way to cre being creative. And if a student is weird, uh, that's better than not being creative. Um, but I think that weird can also be very boring. It's closer to the boring thing. Um, so the question I have for my students is how can we be creative and interesting? And I think that comes from this concept of unexpected. If you're trying to be unexpected and not just weird, um, then you can often get very interesting things. Um, there's a book called Resume by um, an artist called Esteban Bagne, and uh, we're going to look closely at that today. Um, but he does something that, and I'm going to skip this, skip this, skip this. Uh, he has something that I think is represented in this photo right He didn't do this photo. In fact, I'm sorry for its blurriness. I just, I just found this photo on the internet. And um, it demonstrates this idea of unexpected without being weird. In fact, I would say that most of you students have a photograph somewhere in your mom's phone or somewhere, somewhere um, of you when you were dressed up. And it looks like to me this little boy dressed up one day and went outside. He's got a tuxedo on. My guess is he's going to a wedding. Um, very few times do you wear a tuxedo in your life. Maybe to get a prize or go to the prom. And he doesn't look like he's going to go get the Nobel Prize or go to a little too young to go to prom. In fact, how old do you think he is? I think he's about four or five years old. Um, I don't think he's that old. All right. Um, but this is the unexpected part because this is not the entire photo. The reason it's blurry because I've zoomed into it. But if you zoom out of this and see the entire photo, um, this is not a photo of a photo, or, or uh, it is actually a um, yeah. It's that's what, exactly what I said backwards. It is a photo of a photo, not just a photo of a kid. And if we look carefully, there's some changes here. Did you spot them? One of them is the trees are bigger in this outside picture than it is in the inside picture. So that represents time changing, right? So it would take, my guess, several years for this to grow up uh, from these small trees to the big trees. Uh, and my guess is it's around 10 years. Um, in that time, this boy went from being five years old to 10 years old or 15 years old. And if I look carefully at this hand holding up this photograph, and I don't know for sure, I, I don't even remember where I got this photo from other than the internet, um, but I, my guess from the evidence that I'm seeing in here is that those fingers are probably a 15-year-old boy's hands. They're little, they don't look like my hands, old man's hands, and they don't look like a girl's hands. They really look like a 15-year-old boy's hands. So... When I say that's a 15-year-old boy holding that, probably it's that kid right there. So there he is, uh, grown up, 
and I don't know if his grandparents lived there or he used to live there. He li he's already lived there and he still lives there and, and found this photo and decided to run outside and hold it in front to see the difference. Um, but it, it is very interesting. It's, it's, most of you could probably reproduce a photo a lot like this by taking an old photo of yourself, going back to where it was taken and kind of zooming out of it. I think many, many, many people could do this. But this person did, and it became very interesting, in my opinion, the word creative. All right. So today, I want to look at the book um, Resume. Okay. And if we take a close look at this page right here, this looks like maybe a uh, Zoom, or excuse me, maybe a Google Maps. All right. And this is the water, and this is might be the the land, and um, this is actually part of page one of Estevan Bagnier's book, Resume. And um, if we turn the page to page two of his book, um, we will see that the landform starts to look almost like a person, okay? Um, now, that is unexpected for a landform to look like a person. What's another unexpected thing? Um, so we're going to zoom out and think where might we find that um, image of a person shooting a bow and arrow. The trick here is to not be expected. If I zoom it out and it's a, you know, it's a painting of a, of a Native American shooting something, that's expected. But what's unexpected is it to be part of a watch. And I do this with my students when they're in the classroom um, to go ahead and guess uh, all the different things that it could be. Um, but when they see the watch, no one has ever guessed it could be part of a watch face. Tomorrow we're going to take a closer look at um, this book by Esteban Bagné. Um, but today I want you to think about um, what is this idea of creative, this word creative, and what... Uh, do you really mean or what Mr. Lane really thinks about um, creative versus interesting, boring, and weird?